I'm going to show you how to upload a Microsoft Word file, turn it into Google Doc, and make it ready for Google Classroom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my settings in, in Google Drive. I'm in my Drive. If I click on this gear, I can select settings. And the first thing I want to check is I want to check and see if this box is checked right here. So you want to see if you're converting your uploaded files to Google, Google Docs editor format. If you are, then click Done. And I'm going to upload a file. So to do that, I go to New. I click on this button, go to File Upload. And from there, I can open up a document. So I have lots of Microsoft Word documents in my Dropbox. So I'm going to open this Underwater Vents demo. And once I do that, you're going to see here that it's automatically converted into a Google Docs format. So I'll double click it. And when I double click it, it, it opens it up. And now you can see this, this was a normal lab. So there's blanks for where my students needed to, to type in a hypothesis, to do a lab sketch up, make observations. Now, I don't want it to be this blank in Google Docs because it's not as easy for my students to type in their information. And once they do, it's all going to look the same. So it's hard for me to know where I'm going to grade their work. So in order to make it obvious, in the spaces where I want um, a defined space for my students to input their answers, for example, this hypothesis, I'm going to click right after the hypothesis and I'm going to go to table and I'm going to insert table. In this case, I'm inserting a one by one table and it'll look like this. So I have a one by one table. I could take away the extra space if I don't need it. And the way that I like to make it obvious is I like to use the fill tool. Now it's this paint can. So you might have to click on a button that says more to get to it, but you might also see it just in this top bar. This paint can will change the background color. I like to do light yellow. Once I have my table, then this becomes a defined space so that when the students go to in input their answers, they click in there and they can just answer. And however long their answer is, the box will grow with their answer. So I feel like it's perfect. Now I'm going to do that for all these other empty spaces that I have. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this table box until it's highlighted. And then I'm going to copy. Um, Command C or Control C, or I can just do it like this. And wherever I want to insert a new table, so I want a table for them to put a lab sketch up. I want one for um, observations. Actually, I'll show you what I'm going to do for that one. For this one, I want just one table for question number one. I'll have a table, two three, and my conclusion. And anywhere that you have extra spaces, you can delete that. So I'll delete the extra spaces. And these bullet points, if I wanted to keep them, I'll copy them and then paste them. Now, these observations, there's observations for hot red water and cold blue water. Instead of a one by one table, I'm going to insert a table that's a two by one. Now, I actually have space for them to have answers for red water and blue water, the cold water. So I can take the bullet points out here. And now I have a defined space for both of them. So if I do the same thing that I did and use my fill color, then it makes it obvious that they need to in input insert their information here. Sometimes I actually do put the bullet points out for them already because then they know how, many, how much information I'm actually wanting to get from them. So there we go. So I'll put four bullet points if I want them to put four pieces of information. Now for this lab SketchUp, I like to either, well first I'm going to extend the box so that they know that it's going to end up being bigger. So I'm just going to click and drag so that box is a little bit bigger. And either they're going to draw in a notebook and they're going to take a picture of their work, which that would just be insert image 
and then they can take a snapshot of their work. The a second option would be for them to insert a digital image that they create. And I have them do that by inserting, inserting a Google Draw. And I love that you can create a Google Draw inside a document. So they would actually either draw their whole sketch up using these draw tools. There's different lines and there's different shapes that they can use. Or, here, let me show you that again. Or they, I teach them that they can use this image button to search up, for, up images that they might want to use inside their drawing. So in this case, it's a, it's a demo where they're going to, where we actually use flasks. So if I search for flask, all of these are labeled for reuse with modification, so it's perfect. So they can actually find the picture that they like, select it, and then they can manipulate it within the Google Drawing. They can draw over it. Um, in this case, we use two flasks and one we put on its side. So they can do this and do their lab sketch up and then when they're done they save and close it and it's in their document. Oh, I actually put it in the wrong place so I'm going to copy it, cut it and put it where it belongs and there they have their lab sketch up and basically this document, well let me take this out, but this document would be ready to give to my students in Google Classroom and it gives all of them a defined space to put their answers and it makes it easy for me when I go to grade their work.